We all upgrade eventually. If you've seen my last few videos, you may have noticed something hiding in the background. In this video, we are going to go over the ASI 294 MC Pro and two filters, the Optolong L Pro and the Optolong L Enhance, before I use them. Hi there, my name is Dalen. Here at Aster Escape, we go over all things Aster Photography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching this video, please do consider giving this one a like. So I know in my intro, I mentioned starting at the very beginner level and working our way up from there. Now, what that means to me is that I am passing on what I have already learned with the DSLR, but it also means that I can also be a beginner and you and I can go through and learn a camera together. So the ASI 294 is my first dedicated astrophotography camera. I know nothing about how to use them except what I've already been kind of reading up on and how the ASI Air affects that. So in the coming months, we will see some videos about how the ASI Air and the ASI 294 play together. But for the rest of this video, let's kind of go over a little what's in the box because, uh, well, the weather doesn't look too good tonight or the next few days, so kind of got to just wait and see when the next clear sky is. Admittedly, I already opened the box just to see how things would fit in my tote. And the L Enhance has already gotten used once, but with the DSLR, it's actually not that good if the DSLR is unmodded. But let's uh, do a what's in the box for the rest of this video. All right, so starting off, you have the nice, beautiful box here that it comes in. And honestly, until I have a tote that I can put it in with foam, it's probably gonna live in this box uh, when it's not being used, obviously. And of course, the usual instruction manual, which is always good to have. It looks like we got a one and a quarter inch uh, T-ring adapter for this camera. And it also has threads in the middle. So if you use a one and a quarter filter, it should be able to screw into this. We have a regular USB to USB-A. I believe that's the connection here. Just in case you need to use it somewhere that uses this style connection. Okay, and here we got the T2 to 1.25 adapter. Uh, it's good to step it down to one and a quarter inches if you have to. Coming out of here, we have two different spacers and you're going to need them. So from my understanding, just these two coming together is all you really need. So for my setup using the Xenostar ZS61, really all I have to do is screw this into the camera and then this into the flattener and it should all work together. I won't have to really do any measurements using the 12.9 spacing that William Optics puts on the uh, flattener. Hey, more USB cables. Always need extras, right? Especially this style, which is starting to become outdated, right? And since we're still talking about USB cables, this one's the star of the show. This would be the one that you run to the ASI Air or your computer to control everything. So this is the one you wanna keep around. However, I would recommend though, if you are going with a setup where the ASI Air is mounted on the telescope or relatively close to the camera, uh, you can get a shorter version of this and I will link one down below for you to use. Oh, one more thing, we just have a couple short spacers, kind of like little O-rings uh, to help keep things from clamping together too hard. Lastly, out of all of the extra stuff coming out of here, this is the M42 to M48 uh, adapters. So this is basically just a ring with threads on the inside and the outside. And you're gonna need this if you use the William Optics flatteners uh, because they are M48 size and you need to step it down to M42 to fit the camera on. So definitely keep an eye on this ring if you get this set up. All right, and last we have the star of the show, essentially. This thing comes in a beautiful carrying case. So we have this, the USB in and the two USB outs. Now definitely just to make things a little bit simpler for cabling, I'm gonna be plugging the auto guider into the USB twos here. Uh, but you will notice here that it does have a power option and a lot of stores when they offer this specific camera, they also recommend the attachment for power. Now, because I use the ASI Air, I don't think I'll actually need it, but I did get the power supply just in case I go with a setup where I'm not using the ASI Air, especially when I end up getting a laptop. That way I can use PHD2 and just other forms of guiding and processing uh, aside from the ASI Air, just to learn them a little bit, just to help you guys out. Of course, the chip sensor is just amazing looking. Uh, super clean right now, of course. 
but on the inside here there's threads just in case you need to thread adapters or filters or anything uh, that you desire. Now a couple quick things that uh, I noticed about this camera before even using it is with everything being orientated this specific way this would lead me to believe that um, having these up is the up direction so uh, just be aware of that and you'll see this uh, black thing here on the camera this is actually just a screw that seals everything together so you don't want to actually touch that at all it is not in any way a marker for orientation but I'm super excited to use this here soon especially with uh, the Milky Way core coming up and all of the wonderful nebula that comes with it so moving on I did get two filters like I said I got the L enhance and the L pro and uh, I did use the L Enhance, so if you look here, I did do a shot on the Flaming Star Nebula with my unmodded DSLR, and I couldn't quite pull the reds out. However, uh, using this filter, I was shooting pretty much straight over downtown Pittsburgh, PA, and it looks fantastic, at least from that aspect of it. But the reason that I wanted to get these two specific filters is because one is great for galaxies, which is the L Pro, and one is great for Nebulae, which is the L Enhance. And I really wanted to just push what I can from these light polluted skies, which is in a Bortle 9 zone. Okay, so the question you might be asking yourself is, why did I switch? Why did I go with these three items here? Well, the main reason is, that I need my DSLR to stay unmodded. That's what I'm shooting this video on. And I also need it for daytime photography. I wanted an option that lets in more hydrogen alpha because there are tons of nebulae plans in the works. And I also wanted to free up the DSLR for other wider field options that may or may not be coming in the future with other gear. Now, what are my plans? So the first thing is I do need to learn this with the ASI Air. So as I learn this camera with the ASI Air, so will you. Another thing here is that with this being new to me, I will not be doing a review for a minimum of six months. I wanna get six months of use out of it. That way I can form a good opinion and a good working flow. That way I can give you a good review and also a good workflow to work with. That way, should you decide that this is what you're gonna upgrade to, I can help you out. And if you have checked my website, I did mention a blog post where I am planning on pushing the Xenostar 61 as deep as it can go being a tiny scope. Yes, I'm still gonna do that. That is still in the plans. So keep an eye out for what I come up with with this combination. But hey, if you're looking forward to following along with this specific camera combination, please do consider giving this one a like or maybe subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.